any effort that will help black people to think about what they are doing and why they are doing it. And that's black people, not just the youngsters and all like that, but that's black people in general throughout the entire world. We don't have an agenda. We don't have a reason for existing that makes sense. We don't have a culture that makes sense. Because if you just look at the essence of black culture, you can't even enumerate what it is. Except a reaction to the culture of white supremacy. If the white supremacists are not holding us by the ear and say, okay, come here, come here, fella, come here, okay, Uh come with me, Uh do this, do that, okay, when you finish doing this, I got another project for you. Now, we make sense when they are orchestrating what we are doing. You know, come over here and operate this machine. Okay, enough of that. Come down here and drive this vehicle. Okay, all right, enough of that. Come over here and build this bridge. Okay, enough of that. All right, now I'm allow you a little free time. See, once we get that free time, because, you know, the slave mentality is, hey, I'm not supposed to have free time. Somebody's supposed to be telling me what to do. So when I don't know, somebody's not telling me what to do every minute of my entire existence, I got no idea about what to do. I don't even know what I'm existing for. So then we fall into what we call the black culture stereotype, which is violence against other black people. And when I say violence, I mean verbal violence. Listen to black people walking down the street on their cell phones. If you don't believe it, if you think I'm making it up, listen to black people walking down the street on their cell phones. MF this and MF that. And I told that MF, and you know what? And I told, and then that's both males and females. The females saying, Keisha came over to my house, and she come up with all that S and started talking about this and whatnot. And, you know, and she talked, came over there telling me about Vanessa, and Vanessa is my sister, and I don't allow nobody to say nothing about my sister. This is, you know, from the back of the bus, cell phone talk, all hostile, all hostile, nothing pleasant. Not one word of civility out of all of it, wherever you find black people. Nothing being said that makes any sense at all. Nothing that is constructive in any way. And so we have to have a constructive culture. So the first step toward remedying that, black people shouldn't come in contact with each other at all under any circumstance unless they have a constructive agenda. That's the key. Bitch nigga, walk with a switch nigga. Why you switch nigga, talk high pitch nigga. Know how we get niggas. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, it's to be expected. This is to be expected. But we should understand, first of all, that we are programmed this way. Black people are toxic. All of us are toxic. We are loaded with poison because the system of white supremacy puts that poison in us even before we are born. And when we're born, we're born into the system of white supremacy. We're not born into a system of uh, la-la land. We're born into the system of white supremacy. The system of white supremacy is designed for everyone, including black people themselves, to have a hostile position, a hostile thought toward anything dark, and particularly dark people. That's just the way the world is run. That's the way the white supremacists have set it up before any of us were born. So we have to, first of all, know that. So we all carry that poison. It's in us. We're not aware of it uh, in one sense, you might say. I mean, then in another sense, we are aware of it, but we're in denial. But we have to admit, first of all, we have this poison. And then we immediately should jump to What do we do about it? Well, the first thing you do, you don't want poison to spread. That's just a part of physics, the laws of mathematics. If you've got poison on hand, you don't want the poison to spread. How do you keep the poison from spreading? You make sure that every contact that every black person makes with every other black person has a plan beforehand to do something constructive. Do or say something constructive. Don't get on the cell phone and call anyone just to make conversation. 
that's an old part of the, the what you might call black culture or, or people culture, for that matter. With some people, it works. With most people, particularly black people in the northwestern hemisphere, it's poisonous. It is deadly. You don't pick up that cell phone and call anyone ever just to chat. Hey, girl, I haven't heard from you in a little while. What's going on? No, absolutely. That, that is poison. Poisonous. In other words, our minds are poison. The things that we are getting ready to say to people is loaded with poison. The way that we look at people, the way that we see the world, loaded with poison. The poison was planted in us. So we, every time we make contact with anything, we just spread poison because we are loaded with poison. And if we are contacting other black people, they are loaded with poison and dynamite. And you're going to get an explosion unless you tailor and suppress that poison and tailor it in such a way that it's kind of shunted off to the side or it doesn't manifest itself. I mean, when we make these contacts. So I have it in the book, the textbook for victims of white supremacy. No contact, no conflict. If you minimize the contact, you minimize the conflict. Black people themselves know, if you just stop and think about it for a few minutes. You ever notice how well you get along with somebody you haven't seen in 15 years? Uh, you said black people need to stay away from each other. Since you brought up black people in your last statement, um, why did you say that black people need to stay away from each other unless there's going to be some productivity? Yes, black people should stay away from each other because as victims of racism, the racists have filled our minds full of poison. So whenever we come in contact with each other, the poison immediately begins to spread. Black people walk around full of poison. You can almost see it in our eyes when we pass each other on the sidewalks. We're loaded with it. It's been put there. We weren't born with it. We didn't have that look in our eyes when we were little people, just little toddlers. We were wide open to the world, just like all people are when you're a toddler. But when you are in an evil system, a system that is designed deliberately, to produce evil thoughts, to produce animosity, to produce violence, then that toddler, as he or she grows, begins to pick up the poison that's already here. And then the poison is spread as that person comes in contact, particularly with persons of like persuasion. This is why black people sitting on a bus, you can almost feel the atmosphere of hostility there. That's not a natural thing. That's artificial. And it's all put there by the white supremacists long before the bus was built, long before the people got on the bus. Every black person must realize this. So what do you do about it? Codification is all about what you do. You make sure that anything that you say to someone before you open your mouth is of constructive value. Anything that you do with someone, you sit down and plan it first and make sure that what you are planning is of constructive value. Otherwise, black people should go the other way when they see each other. They shouldn't even come in contact with each other. They should cross the street almost before they say anything to each other because once they say anything, the poison starts unless they already have something in mind to say that is of constructive value. And we just tried this. This is what you call the process of counter-racist codification. You're working against racism right there. But see, black people just cannot continue to do like they're doing, and that is wait until they make contact and then try to figure out what to say and what to do, and it comes out all messed up, right from the jump. As we well know from experience, we should have learned that by now. So we should agree that we avoid each other, avoid each other like we are carrying SARS. That's what I was going to say, uh, put in the terms of uh, that we're, we're carrying viruses. Yes, yes. There is such a virus as, you know, social viruses 
that we send, messages that we send, with eye contact, with everything. This is why you'll find a black person who will gun down someone with a 9 millimeter and a line in a grocery store about nothing but a look. Mm -hmm. We're so full of poison, we're loaded with it. So if we back off from each other, avoid each other and say, now I'm not going to say anything to this person that I see coming a block away unless it's something constructive. Otherwise, I'm going to avoid eye contact and every other kind of contact. Well, see, now, there is a governor on black people where that poison doesn't take place. And that is when that same black people, two black people coming down the street, they will start building up poison for each other a block away. But when they come in contact with white people, the poison is nullified because they know that white people can put a hurting on them. They know where power really is. Sex Unless, of course, they happen to corner some white person off somewhere in an alley or something. Mm -hmm. But black people don't have that automatic poison rising to the surface because the poison hasn't been put there for them to have that kind of animosity toward white people. Now, that's not to say that it should be there, but the poison shouldn't be there at all. Black people should be like Mr. Rogers when it comes to interacting with each other. <laughs> Is this subconsciously, uh, subconscious, that we have this poison in us and, and that are not aware of it? And I know that uh, the answer to the question, but I have to pose the question to you. We're not only aware of it, we have come to glorify it. Black people wake up in the morning thinking about how we can spread poison among each other. Consciously we call or it, subconsciously? We, it's, it's, well, it's conscious, because now it has become the black lifestyle. We call it the ghetto lifestyle. We call it the black community lifestyle. It is a major disaster of the planet. Major. This is why we slaughter each other all over the planet in huge numbers, just like it's nothing at all. It's nothing like the sound of the 9 millimeter, one of Adolf Hitler's favorite cartridges. Hitler's been long dead, and he is reported to have not cared very much for black people. But one of the bullets that came out of World War II was a 9 millimeter cartridge, and it is being used everywhere among black people and glorified as the principal instrument for spreading poison and making death among black people wherever they happen to be. The sound of the 9 millimeter in the night. Pow, 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 pow. Glorified and enjoyed by many black people wherever they happen to be. It is a total universal disgrace. But we have that. So how do you avoid it? Avoid contact. A bunch of black people getting together, 10 of them, with no constructive agenda, always means something ugly. Always. No constructive agenda. Pre-planned in detail. The Million Man March worked because it was pre-planned. So and what about it that? was of constructive value. And so everyone the understood the that. What See, about it's the not church? something that's in the people uh, by nature. Uh -huh. It's something that's carefully planted there. So you can plant, you can remove that, if no more than just temporarily, by having a plan. Say now, when everyone does this, when we all come together, the agenda is as follows. Everyone will deport themselves with decorum. There will be no throwing down of trash. Mm -hmm. And if you happen to throw some down or see some that's been thrown down, pick it up and put it in a receptacle. Now, see, this is a pre plan now, black people work very well. This is why the churches, for the most part, work. When black people come to church, they have a code. That's what I was going to ask you about the black so church. So black people, well, right. when black people at least come to church, they at least have an agreement in advance. Mm -hmm. so we're going to kind of act like, for a few hours, we have some sense. Mm -hmm. Unlike the way we acted when we before we came in here, even though when we leave here, we're going to revert to type. But for two or three hours... We're going to go according to the little code that we have set up 
about the way you conduct yourself doing these services. And so that's just a little respite. <laughs> what about religion? Well, religion is nothing. Uh, here again, you define what is a religion. It's a strong belief backed up by action. Okay. Now, the strongest religion on the planet is the religion of white supremacy. Now, a person might say, well, white supremacy is not a religion. Yes, it is. It's a strong belief backed up by action that has a God. Well, what is the God of a white supremacist? The God of a white supremacist is a white supremacist. They are their own gods. This is why they are very determined and very focused and very arrogant and very efficient when they get ready to do anything. They have total confidence and they do not take kindly to any images of a God that does not look exactly like them. They consider any other images as being inferior or non-existent. Okay. So it's everything that a white supremacist does reinforces white supremacy. They don't come around. They don't even come around black people unless they have that in mind. Or unless they everything. have to. Unless they have to. Yes. And the only time they do, the only time they show up anywhere, it has something to do with the muscle of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they're not going to show. Even when they come in the guise of doing other things, as people who are called Indians will testify, they'll say that they come here again with the words, the forked tongue, and they're very efficient. But I don't want to spend all of the day just talking about what they do. A lot of people are familiar with that, uh, and a lot of people may not be. But I also want to emphasize, what do you do? Like we have touched on some things. Yes. In every instance, meaning in every situation that you're in, there should be a prescribed way. That's the one thing that black people do not have, is a codified way of handling every situation. Not some, not guesswork, not shuffling and head scratching and wondering what to do or what to say, but precision work. That's the one thing that's missing. That's the one thing that has been missing ever since everybody started trying to deal with racism. Now, some people have said they've seen some cartoons of my work uh, on the Internet that have been presented, and that uh, it, it pretty well embellishes what I have been trying to say in my textbooks. And uh, to the extent that it does that, well, that has been, from what I understand, some people reported to me a plus. Because they didn't understand what I had written very well, but when they saw those cartoons that just repeated what I was saying and attaching my name to it and uh, came right out of the book, the material did, uh, they say that they better understood it. And I can understand that because people are kind of visual, particularly in the year 2021 now, uh, more visual than ever. 